Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have some exciting news. Well, it's exciting for me. It might not be exciting for anyone else, but I thought I would share it with you. And my news is I have some uh, stuff. So I got stuff. I have a new release from the um, uh, the Frugal Crafter line through Craft Stash. They're stamps, dies, papers, embellishments, things like that. And they are designed to be timeless, to be things you use a time and time again. And um, stuff you can use 10 years from now and they'll still be as relevant as it is today. So um, without further ado, I want to switch the camera so that you can see over my desk. We're going to look through the new collection. I'm going to show you some cards that I made with it. And um, also I'm going to compare it to the Paper Craft Society box that I did a few years ago because um, I had a lot of people after I designed the box and I put weeks and weeks into designing this box. Um, but the only problem with, with it was that once they were they were sold out, they were done. There was no way to get the, su the supplies again. And some of the things were consumables and people wanted refills. But a lot of people never got a chance to get the box because you had to be a subscriber to the Paper Craft Society or you had to buy one of the few open stock boxes they had left after the subscribers had been satisfied. So, um, so there were a lot of people that wanted the elements that couldn't get them. And so we decided to expand upon that and have some of the similar designs. I did a lot of die cuts and things for that box. So we made stamps out of some of the die cuts and watercolor postcards I designed and um, extra papers and things like that. So the same papers from there, but now you can get them just on their own. So I'll compare them in case you have the Paper Craft Society box, you'll know whether or not you want to get any of the extra things or if you're good where you are, because I don't want people to buy duplicates. I don't want people to, um, buy more of the same if they're, if it's not going to provide benefit. And uh, I just wanted to kind of, kind of share it with you and also share a little bit of the, um, behind the scenes process in case you're curious, in case you've ever wanted to design product. Um, and hopefully it will be informative. I don't know. Uh, I think it's fun to share the journey. I also think it's fun to, uh, you know, kind of have a little peek behind the scenes at how an artist makes a living and just different, um, ways that artists can, um, license your artwork and earn from their artwork if uh, selling individual paintings are not what they want to do. That's not what I do. I don't sell paintings very often. I definitely would starve if that was my uh, the way I made my living. But um, not that I make a ton of money off uh, doing rubber stamp designs or anything like that, but it is kind of fun to see something that you dreamed up, something that you drew turned into physical product. And I also want to be completely transparent with the fact that I didn't do this alone. I came up with some drawings and then they produced it. So, um, I didn't have to find manufacturers. I didn't have to do all the nitty gritty. Um, they have graphic designers that lay things out so they look beautiful. Um, they have graphic designers that will hunt down things that I want. Like I'm not a die designer. I rarely die cut um, in my own work. So to give them ideas and say, I want something kind of like this, but I want it to look vintage. They have to do a lot of work on there and to pull everything together to create a, um, uh, a coordinating set of products and to create something that is cohesive. So um, it is a lot of the designer's work on their end, in addition to the illustrating work that I do. So it's just kind of, um, it's a team effort and I don't want people to think, Lindsay did this all by herself. No, Lindsay did not do this all by herself. Lindsay did the illustrating and made the papers, made the stand, made the illustrations and then they took it and ran with it. So uh, I think it's really important to be, um, be completely transparent there too, because there are a lot of hardworking people behind the scenes. That is not me. <laughs> I'm one of the people, but, um, but there's a lot of other people that, that are involved with bringing a product like this to life. So with, with that out of the way, let's go to the table. I'm going to show you my cards and I'm going to show you the supplies and here we go. Let's take a look at the cards that I created with the new supplies. Uh, the color scheme was dictated by the Card Making and Papercraft magazine, and there are step-by-step -step instructions in the magazine for all of these cards. If you are looking for exact um, explanations, but we'll go through them here too. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can see this one, beautiful die cut borders. We got some stamping. We're using one of the postcards. The embellishment, um, die cuts, those actually changed from the prototypes that I got to the final object because I had told the designers, and this is where the designers come in and do their magic, I said I would like some vellum embellishments like what we did, vellum die cuts, like what we did with the paper craft box. I want them to be gold or silver, just kind of metallic vellum um, 
die cuts or cutouts so that people can just overlay them wherever they want and you can see kind of the colors underneath. I think vellum is classic and uh, they didn't have those ready by the time they sent me the prototypes and of course as a designer you have to have your samples done and you know your inspiration stuff done months before the product is actually available. So you get the, um, you kind of get a set and, and they look them over, make sure they're okay. Uh, you get the prototype and then they go into the mass production for uh, for sale. And so, you know, you try stuff out, you make sure there's nothing wrong with them, you make sure there's nothing that needs to be changed. Um, and so that's what, that's what I work with here at the beginning. And then we've got this little easy gate, gate uh, gatefold. And so the colors that I'm using aren't necessarily what I would choose for these uh, these products, which is kind of a fun challenge because they have a, a theme for the magazine. And so they send you a, what's called a brief and they say, here are the um, here are the colors we want you to use. These are the, the type of cards we want. We want a variety of like landscape, portrait, square, um, you know, use a variety of different techniques and things like that. And so um, I ended up, you know, using the die cuts on the thing that I really liked about this set <laughs> is that like the Paper Craft Society box, I wanted stuff that was always going to be usable, nothing that was too trendy or too dated. And I like small dies like these little buttons because you can cut them out of your coordinating paper scraps and have embellishments for your for your cards. And I also wanted these to be things that you could do very flatly so you can mail them inexpensively because uh, postage rates keep going up and up and up. And when I take things to be mailed, usually I need to add extra postage when I'm mailing a handmade card, even if I don't have a lot of really thick embellishments. So it was important to me that I was creating products that could be crafted into cards and mailed economically. I know in um, in the UK where the Paper Craft Society is in uh, Craft Stash and everything is based, they don't charge extra for square cards when you're mailing them, but they do in the United States and probably other countries as well. So I just wanted to make sure that we could mail things economically if, you know, when people are crafting with this kit. <clears throat> so I didn't want anything too bulky. And also I wanted stuff that could be used over and over and over again. I don't like, um, the kind of fast fashion uh, route that I see a lot of crafting products go. Like you're gonna use this once and then you're never gonna use it again. I don't want that. I want stuff that if you like it now, you're gonna like it in 10 years. If you don't like it now, well, don't buy it, right? You buy the stuff that speaks to you. If, if my work doesn't, that's fine. Don't buy it just because you like me and you wanna support me. No, buy what you are gonna use and what's gonna be good for you. This is a really fun way to do a slimline card. Uh, it's great if you're giving like an old school uh, gift certificate to like a bookstore. So you've got a book bookmark there. Um, all these dies are in the kit. This background stamp is, I think my favorite. It's just like a distressed kind of linen type texture. And then I just made a blank card that, you know, you could easily put a pocket. Like if you were using an eight and a half by 11 cardstock, you could, instead of cutting off the extra piece, you could fold it up maybe punch a little hole in it so you could see what's in there and put a gift card or some money in there as a gift. I do that a lot for money gifts if uh, people are graduating or getting married or whatnot. It's a very, uh, very nice way to be able to present some money. And then you don't have to worry about it getting lost because it's in a pretty large envelope. And then uh, I use my sketchbook floozy five by seven stencil for this card and the sketchbook floozy stencils, again, something that I want, wanted to design that would be useful, that would make people use their other supplies more, get more use out of your sketchbook, make a sketchbook less intimidating. Uh, but you can also use them on cards. And this was, I just took the color scheme, I took the sketchbook floozy layout, I cut out the piece, the background pieces from the, the, uh, the sketchbook floozy stencils. And then I use some die cuts from the kit and the stamps from the kit to make the, um, to decorate the card. And like these were left over from the border from this card. And yeah, I love to use the leftovers as much as possible. The background here is from the background set. And just, it's just a five by seven card. And then last but not least, I, I wanted to do a card that was, um, that was landscape. Also, I wanted to do something where it was a little unusual, like you have this coming off the edge. So you will need a little bit bigger of an envelope if you're gonna mail that. Um, but I thought that would be kind of fun. Uh, again, really fun if you want to do a gift card. You can even probably tuck a gift card in there. I think, let's see, the gift, uh, are gift cards? How wide are gift cards? Let me see, I got a credit card scraper here. I can, I can see how wide would a gift card be with that fit? Yeah, a gift card would fit in that pocket too. So if you had a gift card to a, a, a bookstore, that would be really fun with a library pocket. Or really for anything, you could do like a, a beauty themed one and do like a gift card to Alta or um, a hairdresser or a spa or something. I, I just love kind of unique ways to give things like gift cards and cash because 
it's it's hard to give gifts sometimes it's hard to know what people want you don't want to give people clutter you don't want to add to the landfill so something like that is thoughtful you've got the handcrafted element and then you can give them something they're actually going to redeem and use so something something I kind of keep in my mind as I'm designing products is what would I use five years from now I don't rotate my stamps very much a lot of the stamps that I'll grab and use are things I've had for a long time and I've always loved the sewing, uh, the sewing, the crafting, that vintage feel. And I have stamps in that genre, they're 20 years old and they're still, they're still ones I'll use because it's such a timeless, um, timeless thing. I love this, it says diva male. I probably am a diva. I, I probably am, I probably am a little difficult to work with because I wanna make sure things are going to be, gonna be just right. So here is the stack. Let's look through them. Let's look through them one by one. Let's take the first one, because this is actually, I'm seeing this for the first time, which I'm very, very excited about. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. These are the vellum, uh, the vellum sentiments. They're called uh, Ephemera Selections Foil Vellum Sentiments. Now here, I there are some of my um, drawings that have been made into embellishments, but for the most part, um, the designers did their thing, right? I told the designers I would like some handy script. So we've got some happy birthday. We've got uh, live life in full bloom to go with the, um, and they made up that saying, I didn't make up that saying, uh, to go with the flower stamps, a bunch of postmarks, which can be, if you don't want, if you're, cause let me show you with, with um, this here, like after I had the card all put together, I did my stamping. I did my stamping right on the card and that can be a little scary. So if you didn't want to do that, what you could do is you could just layer up a vellum postage embell embellishment so you, you can still see through the design but you don't have um you don't have the risk of messing up some stamping i'm not too worried about it with clear stamps they have us uh, that flexibility and that squish that it will kind of jump over different elements and give you a pretty good look and you can see where the stamp's going but i know it's a little nerve-wracking to like take a card that you've spent out an hour on and then go to stamp on it it can be kind of nerve-wracking so we have the vellum ones that you can use that for. Um, we've got the, we've got the foil, like celebrate and happy birthday and thinking of you and sending hugs. We do have some vellum like postcard, like that vintage postcard font you always see on the old postcards. We got that, you could layer up if you don't wanna stamp directly on there, or maybe you don't stamp. You can be a card maker or just, maybe you're curious about card making, but you don't wanna get into stamps yet because you're just like, that's a whole other thing. Then I have to buy inks and I have to buy blocks and I have to get this and that. You just wanna maybe buy some pattern paper, maybe get the postcard pieces, put some cards together that way before you invest in you know stamps and stuff. Cause you know, we all have hobbies where we'll do some products and we love it, but then we're like, eh, I don't know. I love the gold, the gold is my favorite. Uh, I, I tend to go towards that, but I mean, I just love little things like that. You can you can kind of move around, you can just layer anywhere, and then when you're ready, you can either attach it with a brad. Another thing you could do is you could use spray adhesive. You could use sh full sheet adhesive on the back, or you could use a couple dabs of wet glue. Just uh, keep in mind the wet glue will probably show through. So if I was gonna put like a little wet glue, I would put another little embellishment on top, like a little button or a little die cut or something. But um, you can use double-sided tape. Again, with a double-sided tape, you may see it. So you can either cover the whole back or just do a little a little spot here and there. If I was gonna put double-sided tape, I would try to put it behind the little fleur-de-lis area there, the little script. Um, because that would, and just kind of use a little bit. These are very lightweight, it won't take a lot. And I think that would work really well there. So there, wow, we get a lot of them too. Look at all these, does it say how many pieces are in there? Oh, and you got my little, uh, my little hand-drawn butterflies and gold and silver that you can add overlapping. Cause that kind of, you can bend it so you get a little bit of a flutter to the wing. So yeah, you get a ton of these. I like the script that they chose. It's just a basic, like uh, just a basic cursive font. It's classic. It's like, it's not going to go out of style in 10 years. It's still going to be a classic cursive font. And that's what I wanted. I know it's like not super innovative, but I, I, I'm more concerned with something being useful than something being innovative. And here is just a little, another little hand-drawn butterfly I did that they created in the foil. It doesn't want to focus. It doesn't want to focus for me, but it's just a side view butterfly. That I uh, that I drew, but yeah, total uh, total shout out to the designers. Total shout out to the design designers there. Now something I am noticing here, I would you'd want to um, either trim something like this. 
I would trim off that top excess piece. It looks like maybe it didn't line up with the die cutter just right. Or if you get a piece like this, this would be a really great opportunity to stamp stitching over there or to sew over it with your sewing machine. I think that would look really, uh, really cute if you end up with one of these that is not perfectly lined up. Um, so, you know, I'm just getting the average, like this one is lined up perfectly, but you know, every once in a while you get a little, one's a little bit hinky, I think. So that happens. Great opportunity to grab, to pull the sewing machine or maybe poke, pierce some holes, or use a sewing stitching die and add a little embellishment to that. So, um, We've got thinking of you. I, I, like, I like to make the thinking of you cards. There is, I am getting some uh, mica on my fingers just to let you know there's a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a, I don't know if it's a foil coming off or just this byproduct from the, uh, from the product or not, but I'm getting a little bit of mica on my fingers just to, because I want to be completely honest with you with any of my products. But I think that graphic designers did a great job with, um, with just choosing classic fonts. Because, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to sit there and say, I made every single thing, designed every single thing. No, I'm going to be completely honest. Oh, look, a little love got away. Aw, that's sweet. I like that. Okay, the next thing is something that you may have remembered from the original Paper Craft Society box, but this is a little bit different. This is the postcard pack, A6 postcard pack, watercolor flora. And I was curious to see how much, how many were going to come in here because I wasn't sure. I had the prototype, which was just, uh, um, which was just uh, one of each. So here we have on watercolor paper. It's a textured watercolor paper. We had more of a smooth Bristol in the Paper Craft Society box because that way it could be more easily done with other media. Uh, we did include a tiny little strip of watercolor. Well, I'll show you that Paper Craft Society box back um, when we get to it. But And I don't know what the prices on any of these are going to be. <clears throat> I do know they offer free shipping on USA orders over 40. At least at the time I'm filming this, they do. So um, it's always just a good idea. Keep in mind of other things you might more want to be purchasing just to save shipping fees because they do ship out of the UK, even on the USA site. So um, it can be pricey if you don't get your order up to the free shipping aisle. So we've got some, these are some illustrations that I did for the Papercraft Society box, like I said, and I thought postcards would be a great way to go since you don't have to have stamps and you can still enjoy these designs if you don't want to buy stamps. You don't want to deal with that. There's room here to write a sentiment if you want to. You could uh, mail these out in the mail as a postcard. Now these do not have printing on the back and I wasn't sure if they were going to or not. So if you're going to mail them as a postcard, you'll probably want to stamp the postcard on there and then draw a line and write your address over here, put your stamp there, and then you could write your message over here. So um, they opted not to do the printing on the back, probably to save um, cost to the consumer, but we've got two of these. We've got a rose and a peony. Those are so pretty to color. And here you can see the postcard I used on this card there was the peony. And then we have, the, we have a um, kind of a full background of the peony which you could paint up and either use it on your card as a focal point or a background, or you can mail it as a postcard. Then we have this uh, collage of some other flowers that I had drawn for stamps that the graphic designers took my drawings and put them together, montage them together to fill a, um, a background like that, which I thought was really nice. And again, we've got another one of those. So you've got, um, you've got eight designs total, two, four designs, four unique designs and two each of them. So. Oh, I'm going to back up a little bit. I can't seem to keep it in frame. So that's what you'll get in the postcard pack. These are just fun to, um, you know, put in your bag with a little set of pencils or watercolors or watercolor pencils and then kind of take outside with you, sit down in the nice weather and do some painting or on the couch when you're watching TV. I love little, little projects like that. And you don't have to have a lot of special supplies for this. You can trim it with scissors, your paper cutter, send it as is. Just glue it to a card base if you want to. Um, A6, which is, I think, four by six. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm gonna have to get my ruler because um, because I'm working with a company from the UK, they're, they, their standard sizes are a little bit different than our sizes here. So it is four, about four and an eighth, I would say, by about five and, um, what did I say, five and seven eighths. So you could put it on a five by seven card, you could uh, trim it down for a, for like a half of a sheet of card, sock card. 
And those are the postcards. Next, we have some border dies and buttons and photo corners. These are really nice for card makers and scrapbookers because you can do a continuous cut on any of these dies. And I'll just show you because I keep mine like this so I can easily access them in these little pockets here. So if you look at these dies, you're going to see that they're open on the end. They don't they're open on the end on the side. So I would take a strip of paper and I will do, I'll insert a, a clip at the end of this video, or maybe right now, I'm not sure how I'm gonna edit it, but I will, I'll insert a tutorial on how to cut these continuously so you can make a long, so you can make like a long strip. You can actually get two of these from, I think like a, maybe an inch wide. No, it's probably like a two inch wide piece of cardstock or maybe inch and a half. Um, cause you cut one and then you cut one out of the scraps, but you can go as long as your paper is basically. So this is how we do the continuous borders because I know some of you guys scrapbook or you work on larger projects, you have art journals and you want to incorporate stuff like that. Please excuse my antiquated machine. It still works. And actually I wanted to show it on this big shot because this cuts well, this is an intricate die and it still cuts well on my really old kind of loose big shot. Um, I say big shot and I had I put little glitter stickers over the uh, over the brand name because it no longer that company no longer exists I don't think so first tip when you're doing a border die um, I would put it in kitty corner if you have the space to do that with your die cut and then what I'm going to do is I am going to line that right up to the edge of the paper can you see how like the silver of the die is lining up against the edge of the um, of the cardstock and I'm working with a magnetic platform, so it does help th keep things in place. If you don't have one, you can use a little piece of tape there to, um, to secure it down. I'm gonna crank it through. The thing I like about the Big Shot, probably I like it because I've had it for so long, I'm so used to it. It seems like it takes fewer cranks to put the die through than other machines do. All right, so we're gonna take this up and you will see that we have um, this beautiful design. I'm trying not to let all the little pieces fall out yet. Um, so now what you're going to do, I need to line this up for the other side. I'm going to take my die and this time I'm actually going to see how the design repeats. I'm going to take that last piece. I'm actually going to try to get some of those things out of the holes, some of the paper bits. I'm going to take that last piece and I'm going to, I'm going to overlap it. I'm going to line it up in the last um, kind of rotation of that design. And so what I do, this is kind of because you can't see through it. I just kind of wiggle my fingers and try to feel that it's grabbing in there and just make sure that you're lined up to the edge of that paper and you're in kind of kitty corner again. The magnets help it stay in place, but a bit of tape will also work if you don't have the magnet platform. I'm not fussy about die cutting, but I would say that magnet platform is definitely a great investment. And then we've got this lined up piece. And so now we have a 12 inch border here because that was a 12 inch strip of cardstock. You could, uh, you could line this up as many times as you needed to. You could do a, you know, as long as it will fit, the, the width will fit through your machine, you could line that up, you know, a hundred times if you're patient and you've got enough room to let that paper hang, I guess, out the back of your, of your house. This thing is a really neat tool as well. This is by Sizzix and it is just, I don't know what it's called. I've had it for quite a long time, but it's like this, this foam mat and a little brush and this brush is like on a little uh, pivot and then you just roll it over your intricate die and it will take out all those little annoying pieces that previously you'd have to poke with a with a tool now this is not a new invention probably everybody's already heard of it <laughs> but look at that we've got a perfect look you can you even see i can't even see where i overlap the die but look at that, it is just, it gives you pr these perfectly long paper ribbons that you can use for your projects. And then I cut a one inch wide strip, I think. So what I can do now, I could actually, I could use that for something if I wanted to, um, because it actually does look kind of cute. This is the leftover piece. I could do them in a bunch of different colors and I could save the leftover piece and I could like overlap them and do something fancy if I wanted to, but you could actually get another, a whole other strip of, of paper like that from there. So um, yeah, it's just a great way to avoid waste in your crafting. So I could, I could do this exact same thing again, 
cut it twice, get another strip of get another strip of um, ribbon like that. But I don't, I love these dainty little edges on things, and I think that's really pretty. And I've had doily dies in the past where it's very hard, and intricate dies it's very hard to get the cutting to work. So um, I, I like this. I didn't have to use like my precision base plate for it. It just it just worked, and that's what I like tools to do, and that's what I want my tools that I bring you guys to do. And it's wonderful scrapbookers, art journalers. You can use it as a stencil on a jelly plate. I mean, there's so many different ways you can use this. Um, so I wanted them to be open-ended because I know there are scrapbookers that want to do longer than just a card piece. So this is, let's, let me measure that. This die is six and three quarter inches long. So you can easily repeat it to get those longer, those longer pieces. And even like the, um, the long one here, there is a little space so that you can repeat it if you want. There's a, if you want to connect, have a connecting, a connecting chain right there. There's a little gap there, which would connect your pieces. But I wanted so you could edge your strips of paper, your photos, whatever you have. And generally your photos are going to be not over six inches long. I mean, some of them will be, but you can go end to end to do that or, and just, or you can do the smaller photos just with one pass for each side. And I, and I really wanted that. And this is just to give you a reference for the size of the buttons. Um, the biggest one is about mm, three quarter of an inch. The photo corners are an uh, inch and a quarter, just to give you a little bit of a inch and a quarter to inch and a half there. Oh, actually I can't read a ruler. This is no, this is about inch, inch and a quarter. Inch and a half. Oh, that's almost inch and a half on the long side. And that one's about inch and a half, the more flourishy one. And so that's all one die set right there. So um, you, you could use that without any stamps. You could use that for your art journals or your scrapbooks or whatever. Uh, the next set I want to show you is this matting set. It's like matting and it's got some book plates in there. That's something I had from the Paper Craft Society, the book plates that I really wanted to bring back. And here you can see that um, you got your luggage. Your it looks like a hotel keychain or luggage tag, um, book book plates. You can use these time and time again. I really love a design like that. That's really pretty. If you have um, like the metallic cardstock or the pearl cardstock, because it can look like a metal embellishment. Or if you did it on black and then you use some gold ink like on your finger and you kind of like made it patinaed up. Um, we also have like a notebook paper, which I thought would be really sweet for journaling in a scrapbook or stamping or layering up a sentiment on a card like I did. Um, I did it in a couple different places here, just layering up your sentiments. I, I, I don't know. I love things like library stuff, school stuff, school supplies, stationery. That was also an um, inspiration to this kit along with the um, the a kind of vintage sewing vibe. We've got some kind of vintage photo edges or postage stamps, which I know have been very trendy lately, but I actually had them in the Paper Craft Society box a couple of years ago. So um, that's purely coincidental. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's so funny how that happens. But no, I did not rip off the, the postage stamp trend. I was doing it back in the Paper Craft Society box, which you will see when I when I show you that, just so you can compare. So if you have that one, and you don't quite remember what's in it because it's stashed in your in your craft room and you, and you don't want to run out and get it, get it, we can compare them. Um, and then the next thing is something I'm really happy with because this, we've got a bookmark, a bookmark sleeve, a library card pocket and a library card or just like the shape of the of a card to go in the library card pocket. But these I did as templates inside, like printed on the box so people could just trace them and get those shapes back for the Paper Craft Society box. But I thought having a die would be really great because I know I would love to just kind of grab my cardstock, grab my book pages, grab all kinds of stuff and just die cut out of them. So this is the size of those. They are, um, let's see, the book card pocket is two and a half inches wide. And because that's a fold, this does your your scores as well as your cuts, and it would be um, about four and a half inches tall. And then the insert is uh, about four and an eighth. I mean, a four and a sixteenth by uh, two and an eighth. So or two uh, two and a sixteenth. I'm gonna say. So just to kind of give you an idea about the size for that, and then the size for the the bookmark. The bookmark itself is about five inches by. Um, one and three quarter, and these uh, these cut on the outside rim, so it's really easy to see where your cuts are going to line up if you're trying to position it on your pattern paper. And then the sleeve itself, of course, when it's folded up, it's going to be about 
two and an eighth by uh, five and a quarter. But then the whole die itself, just so to know for fitting it through your die cut machine, it's about it's five inches wide by um, by six and a half. So as long as your your die cutter will take a five inch wide die, this will fit. And I have uh, most dies are about six inches. The base is six inches wide, but they can be up to nine inches long. Um, all of these are going to fit in a regular die cut machine. I just use my Big Shot for these. And my Big Shot is super old and I had no problem cutting any of the intricacies in any of these dies. So that's another thing that's a pet peeve of mine, having die cuts that are so intricate that it's a, it's it's tedious to get the little pieces out. And that's probably because my die cutting machine is really old, but I don't really see the need to replace them. I actually do have a, a adjustable newer one, but I just always go for my old reliable. Um, but these will cut fine in whatever die cut machine you have. And that was really important to me too, because I don't want to fuss. I, when I'm crafting, I want to have fun. I don't want to be fussing around and be irritated. Nobody wants to be irritated. <laughs> Um, this is the background stamp set. This was a lot of fun. And um, this, a lot of this came from the designers, honestly, because I just told them what I wanted. They knew my style. And we had the, um, we had this embroidery patch in the Paper Craft Society box. We had a script that was a little bit smaller than this. Um, and then I said, I'd like some like textures and maybe some like broken patterns with rough edges so that they could line up. And they created these for me. There's another little embroidery design they put in there, paint spats and this vintage, this vintage lace then. And, and, you know, and I've got to give my, the credit to the designers at, um, Craft Stash. They, and that, and that whole, um, that whole organization, I told them what I would like to see for a background. Cause I didn't want to draw background things. I wanted them to be more like old looking and organic and and kind of rusty and crusty looking and they knew exactly what I was after and so this is all them love to say I wrote that no this is all them they're rock stars but they uh they did a great job at getting what I wanted onto a stamp sheet so that I could work with it I'm not taking credit for somebody else's work not gonna do it not gonna happen oh let's do our last uh stamp set now the stamp set is a stamp and die combination set so uh, that's that that would be kind of a bummer if you didn't have a die cutter or if you didn't want to die cut because half half of the stuff is stamps and half is dies. So I feel like if you don't have a die cutter, this might be not the best value unless you absolutely love the stamps. So I just want to put that out there. Um, so we've got dies for all of our all of our flowers here. And in addition to dies for all of our flowers, we have um, we have a button die. We have two button dies and two button stamps. So if you didn't, if you just, if you didn't want to get the set with the um, with all the buttons, you get a couple buttons here. Um, we've got the postage. We get a couple postage postmarks. We've got one that says New York, New York, New York, and we got one that just says postage. And I suppose with that space in the middle, you could customize that. Um, but we've got the little cancellation mark, which I love. I use that all the time. And then we've got a little flourish. Another thing I really like is a 15 cent, the postcard and the 25 cent, because if you do any vintage sewing stuff, you could stamp that like on a pattern or you make yourself the, take the, take the um, book card sleeve or the library card packet, but probably the book card sleeve, I would, I would fold it up and then I would fold that part down and maybe stamp the, make the little envelope and stamp the, um, the money on it, make it almost like a coin envelope, um, or you can make a pattern envelope or whatever you want. There is um, a stamp and a die to go around the stamp. And uh, we've got a couple of little flourishes there that you can that you can build up. Now these flourishes in this kit are not end to end. So I just wanted to make that clear. If I show you the die from this, so I can pull this out without too much mayhem. Let me show you the cutting edge. This is, uh, these dies are all closed. So this is not gonna do the continuous border. Um, probably because lining up the stamp and the dies might be a little bit more difficult, I'm not sure, but I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. And um, these create a little bit of a shadow, a little bit of a mat on there, so. And the dies on these run just in the center of the of the gray. Now for me, I generally would mostly just use the stamps. A lot of times if it's a stamp and die set, 
I just get the stamps. Um, but I know a lot of people do like the dies, so the dies are there too. And honestly, um, the prices on their their stuff at Craft Stash are pretty pretty reasonable. So um, it's not this, these ones look gross because I've been stamping with them. Um, so you know you'll have to decide for yourself whether it's for you or not. But I just wanted to show you there, and we'll compare this because there are some similarities between this and the Paper Craft Society box. And I think that's probably why they combine them because they probably figured that people that had the Paper Craft Society box might not might just skip this one and maybe get some of the other things. I don't know um, because they arranged it in the in some ways that they thought would be more uh, suitable rather than doing the stamps and the dies separately. And then we've got the paper pack, which gives you, <clears throat> it gives you um, three each of eight designs. So it's 24 sheets in total. And here you can see a little, a little smack roll of each of the designs, but I'll show you on the pack that I've opened that I've actually dug into and been using from, which I have back here. This one's my favorite. I think I've used all but one sheet of it because it's just a basic like messy watercolor background. Of course you could do that. If you've got watercolors, you've got paper, you can make your own watercolor backgrounds and then it'll be completely you. But if you don't want to, we got them here. We've got an all over just rose, like loose rose background. And of course you've got three of those. We've got an all over loose leaf background. And remember, you can stamp over, ink up, do anything you want to, you know, push a paper to whatever you're trying to use. A lot of times I do the, the script and the splat stamps over my backgrounds to tie them in or help nudge them towards other colors I want to use on a card. We've got the large, loose flower. And I love it when you cut this down for like card panel size, it gets more abstract and it doesn't necessarily look like flowers. It looks like, or it looks like just kind of like the essence of flowers or almost like a fabric, which I think is kind of nice. And then they shrunk this down to, to make two like card front panels if you want to use it that way, or um, we'll do whatever you want to do with it because it's your card. You can do whatever you want. And they also shrunk down the large overall border and made a repeating, kind of like a repeating background for it. So you can use it for larger projects. And then we have a more bold design, which is this uh, more strong colored floral. I think this one to me, like these look like spring and summer. This one to me looks almost like fall or winter. You know, it's just a little bit more rugged with the purple. I think it's just got a heavier vibe to it. So a um, little less light and airy, but some people prefer that. So it's nice to have a little bit of variety. And then they, um, they shrunk it down and added and overlaid the background, the watercolor, overall watercolor background. So if you want a more dense, colorful background, you have it here, which is kind of a neat, a neat effect. They even put some of the, um, um, some more leaves in there, which is really kind of, really kind of fun. So there is the paper pack. And you know what? It's like, if you don't like the paper pack, but you like the other things, they're all separate. You don't have to buy multiple things, which I think is, is really nice. You can get exactly what you want. So I'll show you what was in the Paper Craft Society box that we had originally, because I know that um, some of you probably had it and I don't want you to buy things that are duplicate. And I want you to really think about what you're going to use in your studio. Um, I, guess, I mean, I guess technically I'm a salesperson. This is, these are my products, but I don't want anyone to get something and then just sit it on the shelf and never use it. So this was the box that we did a couple years ago. And honestly, it was so much work to do this box. I'm like, oh, I, I can't, I can't invest that kind of time again because I have so many other things going on, but it was a lot of fun. And there I look slightly deranged in the, in the photo there for the, the Paper Craft Society box. And then here we had our different projects. Gosh, I, look, I do look deranged. I can't believe that's a picture I sent them. And we have projects, of course, in that. Um, they still, this, this subscription box company is still going. You could subscribe to it. They have different designers every month. But uh, just I just wanted to kind of show you what we did for that. So you're going to see a lot of familiar stuff. We had a, a lot of different little projects in there. I mean, that's, that's honestly, that's why they take, um, it takes quite a bit of time because you have to make you know, there. That probably looks familiar. Book card sleeve. Book, uh, post, a bookmark, I mean. So, and then there's projects from other designers as well. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. And this is, let me show you about the box here. So when I did this box, I said, I really would like to do um, some templates, but 
if we did these in dies, we couldn't do any other dies. And I thought that this is so easy. The lines are so smooth. It'd be easy enough to cut it out and to just do a template. So you might be thinking, Lindsay, what? I don't want to buy those dies. I just want to cut them out. Um, look online for a library card pocket or, or just, I mean, look at these shapes. I bet you could come up with something like that to make a paper tracing template if you don't want to buy the dies. Um, I'm not about making you buy things that you can, that you can do yourself. But if you want these types of things, there they are. For me, I think it's convenient to have stuff you're going to use over and over again as a die. But if you're only going to use it once or twice, it makes no sense to buy a die. So, uh, so that's these are the designs from the box that I uh, that I sent to them, and then they made dies out of them. And then I'll show you here what we had in the box for the die set. So you're going to see very very similar stuff. We had uh, a postmark edge. We had a couple postage stamps that were the insides and the outsides were separate. Uh, see, that's why I, was, <laughs> I did not copy the new postage mark postage trend. This is taken from my old kit. Um, so if you do have this, you're going to see you have a lot of these things already. Now this had this, a smaller version of the bigger edge die there and it's just a shorter piece of it but it's also continu continuous so you could use this in the same way and make a continuous border of that die if you wanted to it's just a little bit smaller the scale's a little bit different uh, for this we did a bookmark a stitched bookmark panel and then we did an outside bookmark we did um the book plates we did as separate pieces for the inside and the outside so they could be layered or you could line them up and die cut them together. We did some of the deckle edges squares. We did one photo corner. Um, we did a word. We did a bloom just so you could overlay that with your with your stamped images. And we did some photo corners and I'm kind of bummed that we didn't have the photo corners in the new one, just the simple photo corners because I love just a simple classic photo corner like that, but probably people already have punches and dies to do that if they like that. Um, but I thought that was really cool that we had that in the Paper Craft Society box. But these um, these elements here, and I'm sorry this video is so long, but I just want people to be really intentional with their purchases and know what they're getting and what they might already have. Okay, so this would be, you know, the similar similar size, but that's one piece versus two pieces. So that was kind of hard to line up and die cut out without them shifting. So that is nice that those are together, in my opinion. Um, we've got the the little decal border, very similar. If they're a little bit different in size, it's, it's very minor. Um, and the postage stamp, that would have been in the stamp set, in the stamp and die set right there. Um, actually that's, that's all one thing. That's one die and it's just kind of like a, a smooshy outline, whereas these are more crisp outlines there. So, um, but the, uh, oh goodness, I lost it already right here. We have the crisper outlines, but they are a, you know, they're a different size or different scale. So. You know, just they're they different. There's there's not like the book. There's not like perfect overlap, I guess. But if you have that vibe, if you like that vibe, like we've got those buttons, they're slightly nah. The embossing will be a little bit different on that one, but and there's you know just a little bit different of a detail in there. But they're similar. I mean, you if you had this, you might not want to get that. I mean, it just depends on how much you're going to use borders, how much you want that variety because this does give you kind of like a good overall smattering. So this is no longer available, but I know some people have it, so I did want to share it. I did want to show it just to make sure that, I just want you to, you know, know what you have. And on the Paper Craft Society, we did the vellum embellishments, but we just did them in a script and you had to cut them out by hand. So that was a little bit different. And we had fewer pet papers in the Paper Craft Society box. And then this was the stamp set that was in the Paper Craft Society box. And let me just put the, I'll put it over the pink tissue here. So that stamp is in the new kit. I'm just gonna, I'll bring this over. It's a little easier to see because my, my stamp's kind of dirty. That stamp's in the new kit. Um, and the, that is in the background right there. And the script is also in the new kit, but it's a little bit bigger. And then I think this stamp, the poster stamp is the same as that poster stamp. And then the New York postmark is the same. 
Um, and we've got a butterfly. We've got the butterflies in both sets. And you've got uh, the buttons the same. You've got one of the same buttons. So oh, that, that button is the same. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show you a comparison. Because um, if you had the Paper Craft Society box and you didn't die cut, you know, would it be worth it to get this for the extra flowers? I mean, that's up to you. I don't want... I just want you, I just want you to be aware of what, what was in both kits in case you haven't maybe forgot about it. And then I think the rest that was in the Paper Craft Society box, because this is my pristine one. I've used up a lot of the stuff in my, uh, my, I try to keep, when I design a product, I try to keep one that's just like pristine, just for like the archives. We also had postcards in, oh, actually, you know what? The postcards that my the postcards that ended up being in the Paper Craft Society box were textured. Uh, the ones that I had were sm on smooth bristle because I had the prototype, and then it came with some cardstock, and it had some uh, it had some die cuts, and the die cuts are what we took and made stamps out of the flower the flower illustrations. I gave them for the die cuts, which were in vellum and in cardstock. Uh, so I just wanted to I just wanted to share that in case. Um, in case you were wondering what was different about the Paper Craft Society box that I did a few years ago and this new one. Because I wanted to I wanted to bring something that wasn't going to be dated that I know people had an interest for that um, hopefully won't sit in a landfill. <laughs> That's my goal. I don't want things to sit in the landfill. I want people to, to use the stuff that they buy. And that's that. And um, I'm going to, like I mentioned before, insert a video. If I haven't done it already, I'm going to do it now on how to do the longer um, die cut strips in case you're a scrapbooker and you want to do that. And I hope this gave you some inspiration. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put it in the comments below. I want to thank the designers at Craft Stash for pulling my illustrations and ideas together into a very cohesive line of products. Um, I don't know if I will do another line of products just because, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, well, we've got the sketchbook floozy stencils and I plan on hopefully coming up with some more ideas because I think those really make you use your sketchbooks up a lot. But um, I don't know if I'll do more stamps. I don't know. Um, it would have to be something that I think a lot of people would use over and over again. And I think these are it. Um, and if there's something that you would use over and over again, please enjoy them. Uh, oh, I forgot to say, a link for all of these products can be found in the video description, <laughs> or at least a link to Craft Stash where they're gonna end up. Um, I am filming this about two months before they go uh, up for sale, before they launch. And um, I will probably pre-schedule this video so I don't forget. <laughs> but again, thank you so much for watching and please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy videos like this. If you have any questions, let me know and till next time, happy crafting.